QRules is an InfoPath form enhancer that allows you to add features that usually require code to your templates without you having to write or know any code whatsoever. While QRules has any number of amazing commands, today I'd like to demonstrate the use of Submit to SharePoint List. This command allows you to submit form information to SharePoint lists, any list you like. You control what form fields map to what list information. You can even return the list item ID to the InfoPath form to keep your form linked to your list. The problem then is how do we get information from InfoPath into a separate SharePoint list? There are several possible solutions. You can write code, you can use a camel query, you can use InfoPath 2010, or you can use QRules. With QRules, there's no code required, it handles updates, and there's lots of other commands available. You can even get a free trial, and it's only $199 to purchase a license. The general steps to add this functionality to your form are Create a mapping to the list using Qdabra's InfoPath to SharePoint list tool. This is included with QRules. Inject your form template with QRules. Add the mapping and SharePoint list data connections to your form. Add a button to run the command. And then you can test your form and enjoy your new ability to submit form items to SharePoint lists. First, we open up the InfoPath to SharePoint list tool and make sure that we've selected the Define Mapping tab. Next, we click in the Attachment control for the source XSN and select the template we intend to inject with QRules. Enter the SharePoint site URL and select Get SharePoint List to populate the list drop-down. Select the list you wish to map to and then select Extract Schemas in order to generate the custom task pane that we'll use to help us map. Our data is going to be from a repeating group for this demo, so we select this checkbox and then we browse to open up our custom task pane that will show us our form nodes. I'm going to go down to my repeating data group and select that. That populates for me. And then I go on to map my actual fields. I'll select my first field here, which is going to be Title and find a column to match to it. Mind you, you do not have to use the same names for your form fields and your SharePoint columns. I've done that just for the sake of clarity in this demo. However, we could be mapping value to title and title to status, any of those things. Do watch your data types, however. You want to make sure you keep those in sync. So finally, I'm going to go ahead and map status here. And after I complete that, I will select Save as Q Rules Mapping. The name defaults to mapping XML. That's fine with me. I'm going to keep that, save that someplace I can find it later. Go ahead and close this tool. When I close this tool, I'll be prompted if I want to save it. Just say no and let it close. We open up the Q Rules injector, browse to our template that we just wanted to inject. We click inject. We were successful. There's some information here in the log if you'd like to read it that will tell you about the things that were injected into your form to make Q Rules work. You can go ahead and close the injector at this point. We're done with that. Next, we open up our form template in design mode. First thing I'm going to do is add an additional row to my layout table, just so I'm ready to add the button I'll need in a little bit. Next, we need to go to our data source management dialog box, manage data connections. Now, these two data connections are part of Q rules. Just ignore those and go ahead and add a new one. We're going to receive data from an XML file. It's going to be that mapping XML file that we saved not so long ago. Browse to it. There it is. And select Next. Include the data as a resource file. You want to get the data when the form is opened. And I just left the name as default to mapping. You can name it whatever you want. We add another data connection to submit data to a web service. This is going to be the VTI bin list service of my SharePoint list site. So we go ahead and select Next. Now what this is going to do is pop up a couple of boxes as it opens up the site. And the next screen we'll see will have all of the SharePoint web methods that are available to us so we can select the one we want to use. These aren't going to be in alphabetical order. Um, just select Update List Items and Next. The values for our parameters come from our recently made mapping data connection. So we find that. This is the list collection. 
and the updates parameter comes from the batch folder in the same data connection. Now for this parameter we need to modify the include to include the XML subtree. Go ahead and select next at this point and before I hit finish I'm going to rename this data connection. I'm going to copy that onto my clipboard so I have the name when I go to create my command. Finish and we're all through here. We can close this window. Next thing we need to do is add that button. So we change over to our controls task pane instead of the data source task pane. And we grab a button and toss that on the canvas. In the properties I'm going to go ahead and give my button a label and I'm going to give it a new ID. It's just easier to find later in the logic inspector if I need to, if I've given it a meaningful ID. Next we'll add some rules. Give your rule a meaningful name. And we're going to set a field's value. The field is going to be the command field in our QRules data source. This is the field that runs all the QRules commands. And the value this time is going to be submit to SharePoint list. The first parameter is our submit data connection. That's why I copied the name of it onto my clipboard. The second parameter is the mapping data connection. As you recall, I left my named mapping. That was with a lowercase m. Case counts. And finally, I'm going to include the optional ID parameter. My ID field, the relative path from my repeating group, is my ID. That is optional, but populating that will connect your form to your list. So now we select OK, and OK, and OK, and I think we're done. Let's take a quick look at our list and make sure we don't have any items on there already confusing the matter. As you can see, our list is blank. So let's preview the form and take a look. Now I'm going to go ahead and add a couple of items to my form. And let's just add two, make it interesting. Okay, I'm going to submit to the SharePoint list. I get a warning dialog. Go ahead and say yes to that. Now if all goes well, our ID field will be populated with the SharePoint list ID. And look at that, we've got the item IDs right there. Let's go ahead and add one more item. I think we'll make this one not worth the effort. Before we submit, let's look at our SharePoint list. Let's refresh it. And as we can see, we've got our two items and their corresponding values. I'm going to change the status on this one. This one's really late too. And now I'm going to go ahead and submit to the SharePoint list again. I've got a new ID for my new item. Let's go take a look at our list. Refresh. Here's our new item and as you'll see item 280 is really late now instead of just late. I hope you've enjoyed this demonstration of QRules submit to SharePoint list. If you'd like more information about QRules or about any of our other fine InfoPath products, please contact sales at qdabber.com. See for yourself how easy QRules makes it to do common tasks like filter SharePoint data, generate a GUID, or copy repeating data from one data source to another. To download a free trial today or to purchase QRules for just $199, visit our website at qdabber.com. You'll also find documentation and links to our forum at infopathdev.com. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.